I am employed at a charming jewelry store situated within the confines of a remote and quaint Canadian mall. This cozy establishment is nestled far away from the bustling cityscape, exuding an air of serene isolation. Within its walls, I have found both purpose and enjoyment, primarily owing to the remarkable camaraderie shared among my delightful co-workers and the pleasant interactions with our esteemed clientele. The rhythm of my days is orchestrated by the mall's structured schedule, a harmonious arrangement that ensures my workdays conclude promptly at 6 p.m., affording me ample time to engage in social pursuits and dedicated study beyond the store's confines. The mall itself, a single-loop arrangement, is home to a mosaic of approximately 50 operational stores, each contributing to the vibrant tapestry of this retail haven. The workforce, comprising a dedicated assembly of around 30 individuals, is divided into two distinctive groups, one contingent overseeing administrative matters, and the other, numbering around 15 individuals, diligently upholding the mantle of security. It is the latter group with whom my professional path often intersects. As a conscientious and full-fledged member of the mall's bustling ecosystem, my journey has been frequently intertwined with that of the security team. Our paths converge during moments of need, whether it be seeking their escort during late-night inventory checks or their invaluable assistance in managing the occasional vexing customer. Over the course of my tenure, I have cultivated meaningful connections with several of these security personnel, with three individuals in particular leaving an indelible mark. Will, April, and Mark. Will, with his effervescent disposition, consistently brightens the early morning hours with his warm greetings. A friendly visage, he would often pop into my store, infusing the day with a positive aura. April, on the other hand, assumes her security role with an unwavering commitment to protocol. During tense and challenging situations, her expertise in diffusing conflicts and ensuring order is nothing short of remarkable. In the realm of security staff, Mark, often associated with the evening shifts, is characterized by his reserved demeanor, which, while polite, is tinged with an air of quiet mystery. However, the passage of time ushered in a significant change, a schedule realignment that reconfigured our interactions. Will embarked on a new assignment involving parking lot patrols, a transition that subtly altered the cadence of our exchanges. April found herself predominantly manning evening shifts, and Mark, a guard of the night, now assumed daytime responsibilities. While this restructuring did not herald catastrophe, the absence of Will's cheerful morning salutations and April's steadfast presence during tumultuous moments was keenly felt. Mark, while perhaps quieter than his counterparts, still warranted a smile from me during our passing encounters. On occasion, I lent a helping hand during incidents of shoplifting, fostering a sense of camaraderie, albeit of a more fleeting nature. Despite my best intentions, these interactions did not blossom into the deeper friendships that had characterized my rapport with Will and April. Regrettably, this tepid equilibrium was destined to be disrupted. Around two months subsequent to the reconfiguration, an unsettling encounter with Mark unraveled the uneasy peace that had settled. A seemingly innocuous remark in a mall corridor unveiled an unsettling undercurrent, hinting at an inappropriate innuendo. A chill crept down my spine as I processed the implications of his words. Seeking refuge in the solace of the back room, I swiftly confided in my manager in April, exposing the unsettling nature of Mark's behavior. This disclosure set in motion a series of events that led to Mark's reassignment, momentarily alleviating my apprehension. However, tranquility proved fleeting as Mark reappeared within the confines of my store, his countenance twisted with anger and resentment. I retreated to the back room, a futile attempt to distance myself from the brewing storm. The boundary I sought to establish proved porous as Mark stormed in, venting his frustrations and laying blame at my feet. The air grew tense, and my resolve crystallized into a solemn declaration of intent to involve both law enforcement and mall security should the need arise. His exit was as abrupt as his entrance, leaving me shaken and on the verge of tears. As the dust settled, 
my gaze locked onto the familiar face of Will, a beacon of reassurance amid the emotional turmoil. Through trembling lips, I shared my account of the incident, a narrative leaden with fear and uncertainty. Subsequently, Mark's employment was terminated, accompanied by a banishment from the premises. In the aftermath of these tumultuous events, the pall of uncertainty weighed heavily. The knowledge that Mark's actions had prompted his expulsion from the mall provided a measure of relief, though it was mingled with a lingering trepidation. This apprehension stemmed from his intimate knowledge of my daily routine, encompassing both my bus route and work schedule. While Mark's physical presence had been removed, his spectral influence continued to cast a shadow over my existence, eliciting an involuntary shiver with each turn of a corner. Eventually, Mark resurfaced, his reappearance punctuated by a law enforcement intervention, resulting in his apprehension. The arrest signaled an end to the reign of fear that had gripped me in its icy clutches. It was an arduous journey through weeks of anxiety and vulnerability, navigating the labyrinthine corridors of my own apprehension. In the passage of time, the specter of Mark's malevolence has waned, though traces of its impact persist. A lingering caution accompanies me as I traverse the hallways of the mall, a reminder of the fragility of security and the enduring strength of resilience. While Mark's presence may have receded, the indomitable spirit of camaraderie, exemplified by the unwavering support of my co-workers, has proven to be the guiding light through the darkest of hours. The echo of those tumultuous days serves as a testament to the strength of the human spirit, a reminder that even amidst the shadows, we can emerge stronger, united, and unbroken. This incident took place during the summer of 2000 in the Midwest region of the USA when I was a 12-year-old boy. I was introverted and struggled with facing conflicts. Whenever I felt frightened, I would notice my body trembling. One day, my father and cousin were working out in the open garage. Seizing the opportunity, I decided to retrieve my bicycle from the garage and ride it along the street while they exercised. As I pedaled away from home, I noticed another child cycling several houses down from mine. He seemed to be riding in circles. While I approached him, I stayed at a distance of about 20 feet, and there was no interaction between us, not even a nod. I maintained my gaze downward and continued pedaling. Upon completing the lap and returning down the street, things took a strange turn. As I neared the spot where the other kid had been riding, he was no longer there. I assumed he had gone inside his house. Just as I was about to turn around and head back home, which was about 80 to 100 yards away, a man's unsettling voice cut through the air, shouting, Hey! Startled, I looked up and saw a man standing in his front doorway approximately 25 feet from me. As I rode past him on the street, I couldn't help but feel a wave of discomfort. This man had a disturbing appearance, wearing a ball cap and thick, unnerving glasses reminiscent of Jeffrey Dahmer. His tanned, burnt orange skin appeared dirty and wrinkled, and he seemed to be in his forties. He resembled a character from a horror film, and his face exuded a sinister, angry expression. He proceeded to issue a chilling threat. If you say anything to my son again, I'm going to run your ass over. Tears welled up in my eyes, and fear immobilized me momentarily. However, my terror gave way to an intense surge of adrenaline, and I paddled back home faster than ever before. I had never encountered such a situation in my young life, and the entire incident left me dumbfounded. I hadn't said a word to the boy, yet I was subjected to this unnerving encounter. Upon returning to the open garage where my father and cousin were still working out, I recounted the unsettling encounter to them. They decided to confront the man responsible for the threat. Fueled by a few beers and their muscular physiques, they were ready to take action if necessary. My father led the way to the man's house with my cousin close behind. A forceful knock on the door prompted the man to open it, revealing a large Rottweiler by his side, barking wildly and aggressively. Undeterred, my father and cousin engaged in a heated exchange with the man, who eventually retreated back into his house, slamming the door shut. The incident concluded without any further developments that night, and we made our way back home. Several days passed, 
leading up to the most chilling part of the story. During the summer, when my parents were at work during the day, my grandmother would come over to look after my younger brother and me. On this particular day, we were planning to head downtown to grab some food from Sonic. Climbing into her car, we began driving down the road, which unfortunately took us in the direction of the creepy man's house. An unsettling feeling began to creep over me as we approached his residence. As we drove by, I noticed him sitting in a red truck parked in his driveway, positioned as if he were about to pull out onto the road. I couldn't be certain, but I thought I detected a sinister grin on his face as we passed by. My unease escalated when he pulled out of his driveway behind us. Panic set in, and I recounted the man's earlier threat to my grandmother. At first, she remained composed, but it became evident that she was growing increasingly disturbed by the situation. Despite making numerous turns in an attempt to lose him, the man doggedly continued to follow us, mimicking our every maneuver. My brother and I huddled in the back seat, keeping our heads down, while the man persisted in his pursuit. Eventually, as we neared the bustling downtown area, he finally overtook us and sped past, putting an end to the unnerving chase. After that day, I never encountered the man again. Some time later, my parents separated, and we left that neighborhood two years later, moving to the countryside with my mother. My father continued to reside in the same house, leaving me wondering whether the unsettling man had remained in the vicinity or if he still inhabited the same residence. I found myself questioning his motives. Was this a mere coincidence or a deliberate attempt to follow us? The entire experience left me bewildered and disturbed, especially considering how he seemed to be waiting in his driveway, as if anticipating our passage. Several years back, I found myself in an intriguing position, entrusted with the dual responsibility of house and farm sitting for a close friend's family. The occasion arose as my friend's younger sibling prepared to embark on the exciting journey of college life, necessitating a familial pilgrimage to the north end of the state. This collective exodus, inclusive of parents, my friend, and a brood of five younger siblings, left their bustling farm in southeastern Indiana momentarily in my care. Nestled within the gentle embrace of this rustic landscape, the farm sprawled across a verdant canvas spanning approximately eight to ten acres. Here, a vibrant tableau unfolded, featuring a multitude of equestrian majesties, a sprawling garden teeming with an assortment of life. Clucking chickens, frolicsome goats, and whimsical rabbits, all set against the backdrop of a vividly imagined countryside. Adding a distinct touch of charm and vitality, the farm also housed four canine companions, including a commanding mastiff mix, a behemoth nearly rivaling the stature of a full-grown bear. This majestic creature, bearing the weight of its formidable size, guarded the land with a sense of solemn responsibility its protective nature a contributing factor to the unusual situation I found myself in. Curiously, and somewhat inexplicably, this massive mastiff had developed an affinity for me. This serendipitous connection served as the impetus for my early arrival at the farm, a proactive endeavor aimed at acquainting myself with the daily rhythms and chores that define this familial domain. In these initial moments of immersion, I absorbed the essence of farm life, painting a mental portrait of the collective endeavors that sustained the vibrant ecosystem within these fenced borders. To conjure an image of the scene, picture standing on the farmhouse's front porch. From this vantage point, a neighboring dwelling peers back across the expanse, connected by a meandering horse pasture and the unpaved passage of a gravel road. This rustic corridor, reminiscent of a picturesque rural painting, traverses the distance between the two abodes a journey spanning perhaps a kilometer or two. As I envisioned the duration of this journey, a steady rhythm of around 15 to 20 minutes emerged, a leisurely pace offering ample opportunity for reflection. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the waxing moon ascended its throne, I delved into the daily routines with an eagerness to embrace this new world. Guided by the teachings of the family, I navigated the farmstead's demands, fulfilling tasks that span the spectrum of animal care, 
land maintenance, and property security. Upon the completion of these labor-intensive duties, a soothing serenity descended upon the landscape, a peaceful interlude where my role shifted from laborer to observer, from guardian to companion. These tranquil hours presented an opportunity to engage in leisurely activities, ranging from shared moments with the canine companions to tending to the mail. As daylight faded and the twilight hues painted the sky, my relationship with the dogs deepened, and my bond with the Mastiff took on a distinct significance. In the midst of this rhythmic existence, a particular night unfurled, marked by an extraordinary occurrence that bridged the gap between the ordinary and the inexplicable. It was around the inky hour of 3 a.m., when sleep held me in its gentle embrace, that the Mastiff roused me from my slumber. With a weighty gesture, it placed its colossal head upon my chest, an action that prompted me to stir from my half-awake state. Assuming the Mastiff's signal indicated a need for outdoor exploration, I rose from my resting place, intending to don my footwear. However, a bewildering tableau greeted me. The once steadfast Mastiff, typically a paragon of stoic strength, now cowered in a corner, its form wrought with trepidation. An unsettling chill permeated the air, accompanied by an inexplicable wave of foreboding. As I ventured toward the quivering Mastiff, I noticed an uncanny distortion in the passage of time, a sensation that infused each step with an almost tangible weight. Upon reaching the dog's side, my attempts to offer comfort yielded minimal success as its distress persisted. In this disconcerting ambience, I became acutely aware of an inexplicable drop in temperature. Driven by a curious blend of determination and concern, I ventured to the hallway and encountered a disconcerting reading on the thermostat. A frigid 37 degrees Fahrenheit, in stark contrast to the outside climate, which should have remained within the balmy range of the 70s. A surge of intrigue and apprehension propelled me to the front door, where a sparse glow spilled forth from a nearby window. This modest illumination unveiled a haunting sight. A cloaked figure, draped in obscurity, stood resolutely in the midst of the driveway. Despite the emergence of light, this enigmatic presence remained unperturbed, a stark embodiment of calm amidst the ambient illumination. A standoff ensued, my gaze locked upon this mysterious form, an encounter laden with unspoken questions and curiosities. Although devoid of overtly threatening gestures, this enigmatic figure emanated an aura that defied conventional understanding, a palpable essence that transcended the realm of the familiar. Engulfed by a profound sense of intrigue, I stood frozen, ensnared in the enigma of this unearthly presence. Amidst this surreal tableau, a pivotal decision loomed on the horizon. The father of my friend, a man with a penchant for preparedness, had amassed an assortment of firearms, safely secured away from casual access. Amidst this collection, a fully loaded 9mm pistol stood as the exception, entrusted to me for use only in emergencies. Fueled by a blend of urgency and trepidation, I hastened to retrieve the pistol, its reassuring weight a testament to the gravity of the situation. Returning to the threshold, pistol in hand, I was met with a stark revelation. The mysterious figure had vanished, leaving a lingering sense of emptiness in its wake. The Mastiff, previously consumed by unease, now occupied its corner with a newfound calmness. This transition from disquiet to tranquility, though perplexing, marked a distinct shift in the narrative, guiding it toward an unforeseen resolution. The night unfolded in a series of inexplicable events, ultimately culminating in a restoration of equilibrium. Morning's light pierced the horizon, casting aside the shadows of the nocturnal encounter. Summoning my courage, I ventured outdoors, greeted by the remnants of an enigma that had shaped the night's events. Upon the driveway, near the spot where the enigmatic figure had stood, an intricate pattern emerged. Two bare footprints imprinted upon the ground, devoid of accompanying traces or contours. These enigmatic impressions defied the conventional norms of footprints, rendering their origin and purpose shrouded in mystery. To this day, the veil of ambiguity shrouds the nature of that fateful encounter. 
Its memory lingers, an indelible mark upon the tapestry of my experiences, a perplexing riddle without a definitive solution. The inexplicable events of that night continue to resonate, imbuing me with a profound sense of wonder and uncertainty, a testament to the enigmatic facets of existence that elude human comprehension. A few days ago, my girlfriend and I found ourselves nearing the end of an extensive road trip accompanied by our dog. After a considerable stretch of driving without a break, we decided to pull into a rest stop off the freeway. The place was quite deserted, except for three sizable semi-trucks parked in a row. As we arrived, my girlfriend promptly got out to use the restroom. I leashed our dog and remained beside the car. As she made her way toward the entrance, I caught what seemed to be someone shouting behind me. To my surprise, it was a truck driver in one of the parked trucks, attempting to get my attention through his open window. I'm usually friendly towards all people, regardless of their appearance, so I responded to his attempt. The trucker, an older man with gray hair and sunglasses, was difficult to hear over the noise of his truck. I raised my voice and gestured to let him know I couldn't understand him. He seemed visibly annoyed by this, which was understandable considering I had asked him to repeat himself four times. Curious about what he wanted, I cautiously walked between our car and the passenger side of his truck. What did you say? I inquired. His response caught me off guard. Can you help me look for my phone? I seem to have lost it somewhere. The situation had unfolded rapidly within the brief 20 to 30 seconds since we had pulled into the rest stop. It struck me as odd that a trucker would approach a random traveler at a rest stop for assistance finding a lost phone. While I was willing to make a phone call to aid him, I had no intention of entering the cab of his truck to search for it. I can make a call for you, I replied with a mixture of firmness and uncertainty. The trucker persisted, urging me to come up and help him search inside the truck. Suddenly, I felt uneasy. The request had taken on an unnerving undertone, and I found myself skeptical about his intentions. Fear began to creep in, and I knew I needed to be cautious. No, thank you. I responded, my tone firm but slightly wavering. I almost considered the possibility that he might be joking with me. After a brief pause, the trucker questioned, you won't help me look for it. Adrenaline surged through me, and I snapped back with a more assertive tone. Leave now. I was keenly aware that I had no means to protect ourselves should the situation take a dangerous turn. Swiftly, I secured our dog back in the car and pulled out my phone, pretending to dial the police. He drove away slowly, but soon returned, asking if I was going to call the authorities. Fueled by a mix of fear and determination, I shouted back, yes, leave immediately or I'm calling the police. With my response, he finally accelerated and rejoined the freeway. As the truck disappeared from view, my girlfriend emerged from the rest stop, clearly puzzled by the intensity of my reaction. While I couldn't be certain if I had overreacted, the trucker's request had set off alarm bells within me. The mere thought of entering his truck had sent shivers down my spine and I was relieved to see him drive away.